When you hear the word Mercury, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Danger. Poison. Alert. Yes, this is what was instilled in us during childhood. We all know that Mercury vapor can cause irreparable harm to health. But why is Mercury so demonized? Why is the system doing anything it can today to make us terrified to even touch it? Maybe so that, God forbid, we don't touch it. Our ancestors were well acquainted with mercury. People attributed magical properties to it and actively used it in alchemy and medicine. States and cities were seized for the sake of getting it. For example, according to one version, the great Genghis Khan decided to conquer Fergana precisely because mercury production was established in the city. There is an indication in the writings of the ancient Roman writer Pliny that Rome bought four and a half tons of mercury in Spain in those distant times. Throughout centuries-old history, mercury has also been associated with the philosopher's stone. Give me a sea of mercury, and I will turn it into gold. And these are the words of no ancient alchemist, but a powerhouse of classical physics, the great Isaac Newton. This scientist devoted 30 years of his adult life to the study of alchemy and particularly mercury. He classified all his research in this area by encrypting it. All these facts indicate that our ancestors treasured mercury very much. Even in the second half of the 20th century, this substance had a wide practical application. Tons of it has been used in various spheres of life in all parts of the world. In medicine, including. But at some point it all changed and today the whole internet is screaming about the horrors that will happen to a person who has inhaled mercury vapor. But wait, if mercury is so poisonous, why has it not been noticed throughout centuries of history? Today, more than 20 mercury minerals are known, but its main source is cinnabon. Mercury is obtained by distillation. But there is another, rougher way. Red stones are simply heated in a furnace until the minerals begin to crack and mercury flows out of them. It seems that this is the method of mercury extraction our ancestors used. Cinnabar itself is an absolutely safe rock mineral, as is mercury in its pure form. Only its compounds with other agents can be toxic. For example, methyl mercury is one of the most dangerous neurotoxins. There are other toxic compounds, for example, with arsenic. The safety of pure mercury is beyond doubt. It's a known fact that people who work directly with pure mercury don't even bother with any safety measures, like protective clothing. Look, this man takes mercury in his mouth and nothing happens to him. And this one just puts his arm elbow deep into the liquid metal and is not afraid to die a terrible death. But if mercury is not dangerous, why are we so scared of it? Let's figure it out. The unique properties of mercury were of interest not only to researchers of the distant past. For example, in the USSR, in the 80s, rumors of the amazing capabilities of mercury antennas actively roamed among radio amateurs. In 1989, they even wrote an article about it in Radio Magazine. Recently, one amateur experimenter decided to repeat the experiment and make an antenna using mercury. Tests have shown that the antenna does work really well. An amazing situation developed with a mysterious substance called red mercury. Much has been written about it in ancient treatises. This substance was called red lion or philosopher's mercury and people attributed all the properties of the philosopher's stone to it. This topic was especially actively raised during perestroika when the secret archives of the Soviet Union were declassified. It is believed that in the USSR, in the 60s, red mercury could be synthesized in secret laboratories and sold abroad at a price of a million dollars per four pounds. However, official sources attribute all this to speculation and deception, stating that such a substance simply does not exist. But let's go back to the usual silver-colored mercury and talk about its unique anti-gravity properties. It is known that mercury can interact with a magnetic field in such a way that the rotating mechanism of the engine begins to rotate rapidly by itself from contact with this substance. Today it's not that easy to find research on this topic. Someone has already appreciated all the prospects associated with mercury, and all developments in the field of its use in engines have abruptly gone into the sphere of highly classified laboratories. But we did find something. In the 90s of the last century, the physicist inventor Spartak Polyakov was engaged in the anti-gravity capabilities of mercury. He managed to design a so-called vortex inertial engine. The point of the research was to create a vertical thrust using a device that accelerates liquid mercury through spiral channels in a closed space. Polyakov was able to get a small level of thrust of several pounds. The whole course of the experiment is described in his scientific work introduction to experimental gravitonics. But the possibility of using the anti-gravity properties of mercury interested scientists much earlier. In 1875, in one of the Indian temples, scientists discovered an ancient written treatise called Vaimanika Shastra. This document was written in the 4th century BC by Bharadvaja the Wise and was based on even earlier texts. According to this source, mercury was used by ancient people as fuel for these devices. And this discovery seriously influenced the further technological progress of Germany at the beginning of the 20th century. 
And according to some sources, not only this one. It is believed that the basis of all modern military technologies was created in Germany during that period. The Germans were interested, first of all, in the application side of ancient scientific works. The previously mentioned Vimanas raised particular interest from German scientists. German researchers were amazed by the accuracy and thoroughness with which the entire technology of using and producing ancient aircraft was described. The pragmatic Germans decided that the ancient people could not just make up all this. It's unknown exactly which sources fell into the hands of German scientists, but even available to us documents say that Vimanas flew on Mercury. History knows of at least two successful cases of the creation of aircraft with a Mercury-based propulsion system. The first occurred in 1751. The Italian monk Andrea Grimaldi created a flying machine on which he took to the air and flew across the English Channel from Calais to Dover, and from there reached London. This amazing construction looked like a bird and covered seven miles per hour. A letter confirming this event, received from London, has been preserved in Italy. There is also a study of this apparatus in French Lyon, certified by three academicians. The second story happened in May 1895 on one of the beaches of Bombay. There were tests of an unmanned aerial vehicle on that day. It was created by Dr. Talpade, a professor at the Bombay School of Art. The same ancient technology of the Vimanas was taken as a basis. The device, equipped with a mercury engine, rose 820 feet up, stayed there for several minutes, and got down to the same place. This event was witnessed not only by ordinary citizens but also by government officials. Apparently, all this was enough for the German scientific elite to start serious developments in this direction. According to some reports, Germany managed to develop an anti-gravity mechanism based on mercury after all. As we all know, after the victory of the anti-Hitler coalition, the entire German scientific base was taken by the Allied countries. Thanks to them, all participants were able to raise their technological progress to a fairly high level. Development in this area went by leaps and bounds, but the plug was suddenly pulled. Today we can't find any high-tech devices with mercury engines. And much less fuel-free mercury generators. While the substance itself and its research are either strictly prohibited or strictly classified, why didn't such successful research reach the masses? The question answers itself. If this had happened, who would extract hydrocarbon fuel, pay for electricity, gas, and gasoline? How would the powers that be be able to keep the population of the planet on the hook? So, how do you like that?